here's the biggest mistake I see 90% of you producers doing. So it's like, oh, okay, I got the sweet loop here. I'm gonna play this. You hear the problem with that loop? Neither do I. That's kind of the point. All right, what's good, YouTube? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys why industry producer loops sound better than yours. Basically, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys everything you do and do not need to know to make your loops sound as good as industry producers. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because I noticed more and more people are getting into making loops exclusively. And I noticed a lot of loop makers, especially beginners, are doing very simple mistakes that I know if they just corrected, their loops would get instantly twice as many placements. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using this Yeet Melody I just cooked up. Okay, so right off the bat, here's the biggest mistake I see 90% of you producers doing when making your loops. Oops. So it's like, oh, okay, I got the sweet loop here. I'm gonna play this. Oh, I can't wait for this to get placed with Drake and Kendrick. You hear the problem with that loop? Neither do I. That's kind of the point. Make your loops loud. You are losing so many opportunities by not making them loud, and it's so easy to do. If you don't have any sort of ultra maximizer, you can obviously just use the amp knob like this before saving it. But me personally, I have this template that I use for like practically every single loop that I make. And I have this thing on here called I have this thing on here called L2 Stereo. And basically what it does is just increase the threshold to make it significantly louder, as well as the out ceiling, leave it at like 0.2, so it doesn't like sound more distorted. And that's gonna do a lot for us. And since I brought it up, I might as well show it to you guys. This is the mastering rack that I use for practically every single loop I make. So on this template, the first thing I have is a sound shifter pitch stereo. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna be a pitch shifter that I can use to increase a certain amount of semitones to really just like test to see what I like. After that, L2 stereo to affect how loud it's gonna be. Then after that, I have this 3D parametric EQ2 to take out the lows. Producers are gonna do it anyway, and you're just kind of saving them the time of doing this. Also another EQ just to like increase highs, lows, whatever as you see fit in your ear. Then this S1 imager just to increase the stereo and width a little bit. And then finally a soft clip at the end to prevent from distorting. Also, for those who don't know, to save a template, what you wanna go is just go save as with just the template loaded and then go into your projects folder, then go into the templates folder right here. And I have the one down here called loop template. That's kind of what you wanna save it as. And when you save it in there, you go to new, new from template and it should be loaded right there. Okay, but that being said, let's go on to mistake number two. Thinking the difference between you getting a loop place and not is you exporting or rendering your wave to a 64 point sync to a 512 point sync. It doesn't need to be that big. Do not export a 512 point sync because for one, it's not gonna save your shitty loop, no offense. And two, more importantly, the file size is gonna be messed up because it's gonna be so goddamn big that you're gonna have to send like 50 gigabytes just to send like eight loops. I've seen it so many times. I've made this mistake. I feel like every loop maker has made this mistake. Just trust me on this, keep it at 64 point sync. Also cut remainder in your loops, just to increase the tail end so the loop isn't like nine years long. And as you can see, I'm rendering this in the master of FL Studio and not exporting it separately because you wanna be efficient when making your loops and you don't want to have individual projects dedicated to those loops. Instead, be more efficient by just exporting them here into FL Studio and saving them here and doing what a lot of experienced loop makers do and use your previous stems or sounds or effect racks to start making your next loop instead of completely starting from scratch. Another reason why you want to export in here, and I swear this is like the most annoying thing with loop makers. So I've got this example loop here. You're looking at like, oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. Oh yeah, I can't wait to make a fire beat. Oh, what's the tempo again? And then you zoom in, you see this little bitch right here. There's nothing more annoying than when there's like a little bit of tail end and you chop up the loop and it's not necessarily on time. And then you're messing with the metronome and you're like, oh, there's this little trim end that like I forgot to remove. So now I got to go like, oh, trim. And let's say, oh, I want to change the tempo, but I got like align it to 21 here. Oh yeah, sweet. Oh, this is awesome. Oh yeah, I'm having the time of my life. I can't wait to be a producer. That whole process is so tedious and just an absolute vibe killer. Don't do it. Export an FL Studio, not out of it. The next big mistake I see people doing all the time is this right here. They don't leave the individual sounds separately export ported past the loop like this. And the reason you want to do this is you can't just like cross your fingers and hope that every single producer who comes across your loop is going to use the exact arrangement that you left. They may be able to alter the sounds, you know, reverse things, uh, mess with them a little bit, you know, add some variation. And you're only going to be able to do that if you give them the individual stems like this. So it's just another way to allow them to be a little bit more creative. You'd be surprised at how many more placements you're going to get if you just do this very simple thing. Also, just another mistake is not knowing general common arrangements. Stick to the six, four. So six for the verse right here and four for the hook. This is just standard for like most beats, even though they're gonna get pre-arranged, it's just the most easy pattern to rap on. So stick to it when you arrange your loops. And also another huge mistake I see people doing is their intros for their loops. When you send beats to an artist, you gotta understand that like the first eight seconds are the most important. A lot of the times you may actually have a really good beat for that artist, but the first eight seconds, the intro or whatever is boring. So they don't even care and they just skip to the next one. <coughs> it, that, case, <coughs> that case is, 
That case is even worse when it comes to making loops. People will skip through loops in the matter of like two seconds. So like they can easily just remove it. So don't worry if it's like messing with the original idea you had in mind of oh, fuck me. Just make it intriguing. Put the most intriguing part at the beginning. Also, another thing I absolutely am so sick of seeing loop makers do is this right here. It's like, oh, sweet. I got this epic loop. I can't wait to hear your epic loop. <laughs> actually hate when loop makers have bass patterns playing in their loops, specifically at the beginning. It's like, dude, I'm going to find the root note anyway. And it's not hard to add like a bass line whatsoever. I I'm a producer, you know what I mean? Let me be a producer a little bit. Let me throw something in there. Also similar to that point, another thing you just shouldn't be doing is making your loops like insanely over complex. Every single producer knows the feeling of like having that thing which you think is special and you're listening to it and you want to spend like 94 years like editing it, listening to every single sound like, oh yeah, let me EQ this for 90 million years, you never really know which specific one is going to be the one that's a hit and which one isn't. So don't spend like a whole hour like tweaking sounds and EQing everything perfectly with like 50 things on your mixer because it's not efficient and it's a waste of time. Play your part. Don't overdo it. And likewise, have like 9 million sounds like, oh, hell yeah, here's my here's my intro, boys. Here's my sweet intro. No one's going to use that. OK, and as for actually making the loop, probably the most important mistake that I see people making is make sure you export all your sounds individually as stems before you export the whole thing altogether. Now you may be asking, oh, what's the point of that? Why would you bother doing that? I said that too early. The reason we want to do that is because you want to make sure that you are trimming the tail end out of your sounds because you got to understand that like, so he might be chopping and slicing up like this. Like, okay, let's say he wants the intro to be right here. And then he wants to move this here for your loop. Well, he's going to have a problem doing that because you see right there, we have the fading reverb or tail end of the previous sound not being trimmed. So when the producer trims it, he's going to have these like weird ticks right, right at the beginning of the loop. But basically, it's not hard to do. Like, let's just get rid of this. Boom, shabing, bang, shabong, shabing, shibuya, shabi, and shabing. See, and just like that, we've completely gotten rid of all the tail ends. So if we chop it now, it's not gonna have those like ticking sounds playing at the beginning of each chop, which is super important to do. Make sure you do that. So now I'm gonna go over the next biggest mistake that I see so many loop makers doing, how they organize their loops, as well as how they save them and how they name them. I'm gonna show you exactly how you should do it every single time you make loops. First off, go in here, go to save as. I have like a loop folder on my desktop here real quick. I go into kits. And this is the first thing I recommend you do is you organize different types of loops and different kind of folders like this, because if you're going to get loop kits placed, you need to put them out in specific themes and styles because people are going to be searching by those keywords based off what they're looking for. And you don't want to just have like a random arrangement of random loops I made because no one's looking for that. So this is Yeet Loop. So I'm going to put this in here and I actually already have this loop name because OBS decided not to record this tutorial the first time I recorded it. <coughs> But you can see right here, this is the way I have it saved. First thing you want at the beginning of every loop always is the at, specifically for your Instagram. A lot of like producers pass around loops and whatnot. You can't just bet on every single person who has your loop to know exactly who you are and have your contact information. So make sure to have that. Then you want to go dash and then give it a name of some sort. Names are actually much more important than you may think because a lot of the times beats get exported based off the loop name and beat names tend to be the thing that the artist based their song off and usually are the starting keywords that they write the song around. One of my favorite examples of this is the original sample that was used for Goosebumps by Travis Scott. The original sample is actually called Goose underscore Bump underscore 65 BPM. And Travis Scott saw that and he was like, oh, I bet. And he just like wrote the song based off that, you know what I mean? And then the next thing you want to put the tempo, I have it at 140. And then in brackets, you just want to describe the loop a little bit. So I just wrote synthetic and yeet. And then finally at the end, you just want to say the scale of the loop because of course the producer wants to tune the 808 to the loop as well as maybe add their own instruments to it. So it's very important that you add the scale. And yeah, just click save and you're done. And yeah, basically that's going to be it for that tip as well as the tutorial. For those who don't know, I started a Patreon, which you guys can join with the link in the description, where you can get access to exclusive drum kits, tutorials, feedback, as well as polls and updates on which video I'm going to be doing next on this channel. Make sure to go follow my Instagram and Twitter at Finn of the God, as well as join the JMizzy Discord with the link in the description. Let me know what video you guys want me to do next on this channel. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something here. New drum kit on the way. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm out. Peace.